All right, hello everyone. Um, well, we're well before we're gonna um, get, get started here. Um, but before we dive in, I just wanted to make sure that you can all hear me and see my screen. Um, so if you can hear me talking right now and you can see me flipping through the first few slides, if you could just um, go into the chat or the Q&A and just let me know, um, that would be really helpful. So I'm sure that I'm talking to people who can hear me. Anyone? Can you guys hear me? All right, perfect. Thank you, Dominique. Thank you, Linda. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put myself on pause for just a little bit and we will get started right at the top of the hour. For those of you who just joined us, um, we're just going to give everybody a minute or so to get logged in and, and get started right at the top of the hour. All right, hello everyone and welcome to our first Giving Tuesday webinar of 2021, which is hard to believe. Um, and today we're going to be talking about the question of is Giving Tuesday still relevant, um, which I hope is a, an exciting topic to go over. My name is Linda Gerhardt and I'm the Senior Community Engagement Manager here at Mighty Cause. I've been with Mighty Cause since 2016 and before that my career was in the nonprofit sector in marketing and communications. So I've personally lived through quite a few Giving Tuesdays in my time and that background is actually what inspired me to cover this topic in a webinar um, because in talking to other people that I know that work in nonprofits, um, there's been some rumblings about whether or not Giving Tuesday is still relevant, whether whether it's dead, concerns about the role of Facebook in Giving Tuesday, and we are going to go over all of that today. 
Um, so here's a look at today's agenda. We're basically going to be going through a little bit of a history lesson when it comes to Giving Tuesday and dive into the data that we picked up and lessons we learned in 2020. And I also, again, want to address the role of Facebook in Giving Tuesday in a head-on way. So we'll talk about that as well. Um, since we've got a lot of ground to cover today, I'm going to be taking questions at the end of the presentation. So if you think of anything you'd like to ask for the Q&A session, just stick that into the Q&A box in your Zoom window and we will make sure that we get to it at the end. So since Giving Tuesday is nearly 10 years old at this point, um, and amazingly actually predates a lot of people who are currently in the nonprofit workforce, um, I thought going through the history of the event would be helpful for context uh, for this whole movement and what we're talking about. The first Giving Tuesday was held on November 27th in 2012, and it was created by the 92nd Street Wise Belfer Center for Social Innovation and Social Impact with the United Nations Foundation. Um, the first event wasn't as much of an organized event, um, but it was organized around an idea, which is what if we made generosity go viral. Um, Giving Tuesday is held annually um, the Tuesday after United States Thanksgiving, Black Friday and Cyber Monday, which is a very intentional date because the goal is to redirect some of the energy that is spent on consumerism back to philanthropy, volunteerism, altruism, and giving back. Um, in the first year, it really wasn't an organized fundraising event. It was really all about rallying people around the cause of generosity and giving on a specific day. And it did get a good amount of coverage from the mainstream press, as well as the White House, um, which is a pretty big deal. Um, and Corporate partnerships were part of Giving Tuesday from the beginning. Um, in its first year, uh, the media company Mashable, Skype, and Cisco were actually founding partners who helped fund and champion the cause of Giving Tuesday. In the next couple of years, Giving Tuesday grew, it got a lot more attention, and it became something that was very intensely nonprofit focused, um, and it picked up coverage from nonprofit industry publications like Charity Navigator and Chronicle of Philanthropy. Um, more than 7,000 nonprofits in the U.S. participated in 2013, which in retrospect with everything that Giving Tuesday has become, actually seems like a small number. Um, in 2014, Giving Tuesday partnered with CrowdRise, um, which is a company that is now owned by GoFundMe. Um, and they launched the Giving Tower, which was a visual representation of all the giving that was happening on Giving Tuesday. And 2014 was also really the year that a lot of fundraising platforms got involved in Giving Tuesday. Um, previously, Blackboard was the top processor for Giving Tuesday donations. But in 2014, fundraising platforms really got in on organizing events to engage the nonprofits using their technology and to get giving happening on their platforms. Um, 2014 was also the first year of our own Giving event, uh, Giving Tuesday event at Mighty Cause, which was then known as Razu. Um, giving Tuesday was also global in 2014, raising millions of dollars from 68 different countries. So Giving Tuesdays influence started to grow very quickly in the first couple of years. 2015 was a bit of a turning point for Giving Tuesday, and it was the first year we saw Mark Zuckerberg enter the picture. Um, on Giving Tuesday in 2015, Mark Zuckerberg and his wife um, released a statement that was formatted as a letter to their newborn daughter, announcing their intention of donating 99% of his Facebook shares um, to charity and that they were starting the Chan Zuckerberg initiative. Um, and this was also a record breaking year for Giving Tuesday. They released over $100 million globally, which is enormous. And in 2016, everything changed when it came to Giving Tuesday. Um, 2016 was the year that Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation first offered matching funds, which were only available to nonprofits collecting donations on Facebook. Um, they started the day out with half a million in matching funds, and those were claimed within hours. So the funds ran out very quickly. And so the Gates Foundation had to add another half million to the pot of prizes that were available or the pot of uh, funding that was available. Um, this was a huge driver in activity for Giving Tuesday, and the total amount raised was over $177 million. Um, and an agency who studied the growth of Giving Tuesday concluded that Giving Tuesday's presence had increased over 300% since its inaugural year in 2012. So this was really a game-changing year. And we're going to circle back to the involvement of Facebook, but this was the first year that Giving Tuesday 
was primarily centered around a specific platform um, and nonprofits and donator donors were incentivized to use a specific platform for Giving Tuesday fundraising and making their charitable donations. In the next couple of years, Giving Tuesday grew really significantly, um, but it also became a day that was all about Facebook and winning those matching funds. Um, so in 2017, the Gates Foundation provided $2 million, and the people who were analyzing it closely found that the money was gone in literally seconds, specifically 86 sec seconds. Um, in 2018, uh, the Gates Foundation was out of the picture and PayPal entered the picture. Um, so Facebook and PayPal joined forces in 2018, um, and they matched up to 7 million. Um, so the, the amount of funding that was flowing was really growing exponentially. Um, and that $7 million was also gone within seconds. Um, so in 2017 through 2019, Giving Tuesday really became about competition and fundraising strategy so that nonprofits could win the matching funds that were being offered through Facebook, which was a big shift in the scope of the event, as well as the experience as per, of participating it both as a nonprofit and a donor. Um, and on a different note, 2019 was also the year that Giving Tuesday became its own separate nonprofit entity. So it split off from the 92nd Street Y and became its own um, organization. They received their 501c3. So before we move on, I actually wanted to expand upon that. Um, and I thought it might be helpful to go through what the Giving Tuesday organization actually does, because I have found in talking to people that there is a little bit of confusion about that. Um, Giving Tuesday over the years has really become an opportunity for data collection and analysis and tracking trends in giving. And that is one of the primary things that Giving Tuesday, the organization exists to do. Um, the Giving Tuesday Data Commons coordinates reports from 60 global partners, um, including Mighty Cause, we are part of, we are one of their partners. Um, and they report on giving, um, which is where the to totals come from. Um, they really have become a go-to place for information about the state of nonprofit giving and philanthropy, and their reporting was their primary source of inf information for this webinar. Um, so you can go to the Giving Lab and read their blogs and reports for a lot of great information about Giving Tuesday and philanthropy and nonprofit trends. Um, now, the biggest source of confusion is really the idea that the Giving Tuesday organization runs their own event event or they own Giving Tuesday, which isn't really what they do. It's a movement. And there are tons of events. So they essentially collect the data in one central place, have their experts analyze it and report on it. And they also build a map of Giving Tuesday events that are happening around the world. So if you're looking for a Giving Tuesday event to participate in as a nonprofit, as a donor, um, you can go to givingtuesday.org and they have a, a really handy map where you can find local events that are happening on Giving Tuesday. Um, all right, so unfortunately now we have to get into everything that went down in 2020. I really don't want to spend too long recapping the misery because we all just lived through it, but it was a really notable year for nonprofits for a lot of reasons. So we're going to break that down and go over what we learned in 2020. So as I mentioned, 2020 was notable for a lot of reasons, um, but it was also the first year that there were two Giving Tuesdays. Um, one was on May 5th called Giving Tuesday Now, which was a new event that was specifically focused on COVID-19 relief. Um, and then the annual event that happened in December. Um, obviously there was a lot of intense stuff happening everywhere, but in the nonprofit sector, there was a lot of concern about the recession that the pandemic had sparked. Because for anybody who was working working around nonprofits or in nonprofits during the 2008 recession. Uh, that was just a really traumatic time for this sector as a whole. Um, that recession forced nonprofits to lay off workers in record, record numbers. Lots of nonprofits shut down or greatly reduced their operations. And it did take a really long time to recover from that. Um, so there was a lot of anxiety. And in fact, one of the things that we see is that around the time Giving Tuesday took hold, that's when the sector really started to recover. I don't know if that's um, a direct, you know, causation, but that was around the time the nonprofit sector started to regain some of what they had lost in the 20, 2008 recession. 
So Giving Tuesday Now was a huge success. It raised $503 million just in the United States. Um, and around the world, 145 countries participated. Um, and we're going to look at a chart of this a little bit later. But there was a big giving slump in February and March, which is around the time that things started to go haywire in the United States. Um, and then there was a spike in the end of April and through May that really turned things around for the nonprofit sector. So not all of that is directly related to Giving Tuesday since there were other events that inspired a lot of giving on a grand scale, but it was definitely a factor and it really signaled to the sector as a whole that this recession was different than the one that we were digging ourselves out of at the beginning of the 2010s. Um, so there, were, there was some hope that was really sparked around the time of Giving Tuesday now. So what did we learn in 2020? Um, there were a lot of really positive reports of nonprofit recovery, and that is accurate overall when we look at the data. But what we can see when we look at 2020 as a whole is that it really wasn't equal across the board. Um, certain categories saw massive gains in giving, such as health and human services, um, but other categories suffered significant losses. Um, arts and culture organizations and any, real, any nonprofit that relies heavily on ticket sales, memberships, and performances were also really, really hard hit. Um, Small nonprofits struggled in particular, and one of the things uh, Giving Tuesday's reporting found was that in 2020, many small nonprofits simply did not fundraise for many months, um, and that of course hindered them, their failure to fundraise. Um, 2020 also saw a ton of, for the first time, new donors giving in smaller amounts. Donor mobility was higher, uh, meaning that donors were giving in smaller amounts to lots of organizations and didn't seem as tied to investing in one particular cause or organization. They were casting a really wide net with their donations. So we saw a lot of people giving for the first time, giving in smaller amounts and giving in lots of different places. Um, one thing that is interesting as well is that the number of small donors increased in a really dramatic way, but the dollars they contributed were only 10% of the total dollars raised. So they had this big spike in new donors, but they actually didn't contribute that much in dollars uh, when we looked at the data. Um, Mid-sized donations and donors actually decreased, um, though there's no real clear-cut reason why this would have happened. Um, and Giving Tuesday also found con concern about the pandemic strongly correlated with charitable giving, which is not super Super surprising and is pretty consistent with how we know donors behave. Um, but in a survey, they found that the more concerned someone was about COVID-19, the more likely they were to give to charitable organizations. So with all of that in mind, there were some key takeaways when we looked at this data or when I looked at this data that Giving Tuesday put together. Um, number one is that if there's a flood of new donors one year, retention needs to be the focus in the following year. So acquisition and retention are often inverse properties, meaning that when one rises, the other falls. Um, and that's what we saw in 2020, and hopefully we'll see retention increase in 2021, um, since it's really unlikely that donor acquisition this year can keep up with the pace of 2020. Um, Mid-sized donors, mid donors really can't fall by the wayside in 2021. These are valuable donors, and a lot of them were unfortunately lost in 2020. So in 2021, it's going to be important for nonprofits to recapture some of those donors they lost and nurture these relationships with their mid-sized donors. Another thing that is important to remember is that failure to fundraise is failure to stay funded. And small nonprofits failed to fundraise frequently in 2020. Um, as for why that is, a lot of those reasons were very understandable. They were dealing with a big shift and they didn't have the tools necessary. And a lot of them had their operations severely hindered by the, or by the, the pandemic. So there are understandable reasons, but small nonprofits did fail to fundraise each month of 2020. Um, so if you're not trying to fundraise or ask for donations, the donations are not going to come to you for the most part. And being proactive in fundraising, especially as a small nonprofit, is very important. Um, I know in talking to nonprofits that a lot of them struggled with the question of whether it was OK to fundraise. Um, and I tried to assure them that it was, but there was a lot of um, uncertainty about whether it was OK to fundraise if they were not specifically helping with the pandemic. Um, and finally, the nonprofits that did really well in 2020 seized on what Giving Tuesday calls giving moments, where they tapped into public sentiment and opportunities to engage the public 
in their cause. Um, so obviously we can't orchestrate giving moments like the ones we saw in 2020, nor would we want to, but it's important to continually think about what a giving moment looks like for your nonprofit and how you can use those giving moments to drive philanthropy. Um, I did want to take a moment and call out some key places where I got my data. I'm not pulling this out of thin air. This data exists out in the world. Um, and you can go to these places if you would like more information and more data and you'd really like to dive in. Um, Giving Tuesday's report that they just released not too long ago called Giving in Unprecedented Times was my main source of information for all of this uh, webinar. And it's free. You can go to givingtuesday.org and download this report. Um, the Giving Tuesday Data Commons and Giving Lab are also sources that I use and great places to check for data. Those are both accessible from givingtuesday.org slash data. Um, the Association of Fundraising Professionals fundraising effectiveness project, they actually release quarterly reports and it's a really great source of data and analysis for the nonprofit sector. Um, and one that I look for every year is the MNR benchmarks report that is released annually. So they typically release it at the beginning of the year. Um, and you can find that at mrbenchmarks.com. I did want to give you a heads up that there is a strobing graphic on the homepage of the report this year. So if you're sensitive to that sort of thing, um, just go in and, uh, you know, be aware of that that or maybe stick to these other sources. So I did say we would circle back to this and I do want to spend a little bit of time talking about Facebook because as I mentioned they really did change the landscape of Giving Tuesday. So first, I do want to call out the things that were very good um, uh, that came about because of Facebook's involvement with Giving Tuesday. The brand awareness that Giving Tuesday picked up from Facebook was absolutely huge, and it's really hard to say whether or not Giving Tuesday would be the massive global happening and movement movement that it currently is without Facebook jumping into the game. Um, there's also been an absolute truckload of money funneled into the nonprofit sector through Facebook's partnerships with the Gates Foundation, PayPal, and so on. Um, and that money has funded causes and motivated donors to give in a really big way. Um, and most people in the world are on Facebook, even though uh, a lot of us don't like to admit it publicly, but the omnipresence of Facebook made it a lot easier for people who aren't in tuned into the nonprofit sector to participate in Giving Tuesday as donors, as fundraisers, and it really helped get the word out about Giving Tuesday. That said, there have been a few downsides. Um, that The biggest one is that Facebook's mad rush for those matching funds have created a very competitive environment for nonprofits, um, which to some degree runs contrary to what the Giving Tuesday movement is all about, focusing on competition for money rather than causes and charity and bringing people together. Um, after the first year, there was also frustration brewing among small and mid-sized nonprofits that the big nonprofits were benefiting through from the funding the most, which is true, um, and that the small guys really didn't have a chance to compete for the matching funds. Um, and that is more for the most part borne out by the data. Bigger nonprofits got very strategic about winning those funds and they were successful. Um, so a lot of nonprofits they coordinate larger gifts in the early moments of Giving Tuesday to ensure that they uh, get some of the money and smaller capacity orgs just can't compete on the level of a big nonprofit that's got multi-million dollar budgets and entire staffs of people who are just focused on fundraising. Um, so there was some frustration brewing among smaller and mid-sized nonprofits that they participated year in and year out, but they never actually saw any of those matching funds. And this is all anecdotal, but there are some high level questions that I've heard um, expressed in recent years about Facebook's role in Giving Tuesday from people in the nonprofit world. Mainly, there have been concerns that Facebook is turning Giving Tuesday into an event that's really driven by big tech money and used to drive activity on social media rather than being about giving in the actual spirit of Giving Tuesday. Um, and a lot of people are very understandably suspicious of Facebook's interest interest in Giving Tuesday. They waive their fees and they put a lot of their time and effort and money into getting people to use Facebook for Giving Tuesday, even though they're a social media platform that's not really set up or geared toward nonprofits. Um, so what is their motivation? Um, Facebook has come under a lot of fire in recent years from Congress, from users. Um, so a lot of people in the nonprofit sector are a little bit cynical about Facebook's involvement in Giving Tuesday and whether it's actually good for nonprofits. 
Um, the good news is that there are some really easy answers to why Facebook wants to dominate Giving Tuesday. Um, and if you've been paying attention to the controversies around Facebook in recent years, it really shouldn't come as any surprise that the biggest benefit to Facebook is gobs and gobs of data about their users, um, which is what they monetize to turn into a profit. Um, so all of the activity on Giving Tuesday is very helpful for them. It gives them information about user behavior, what speaks to these users, and the more data they have, the more they can use to make a profit for their company. Um, another important reason that Facebook wants to be involved in Giving Tuesday is friction reduction. Um, Facebook sees Giving Tuesday as a tool to get more people processing payments through Facebook, um, which in turn will make it easier in the future to make other payments through Facebook, whether they're sending money or buying products. Um, they want you to be using Facebook to process uh, transactions. So each time you make a purchase or process a payment through Facebook, they learn a little bit more about you. Um, and that is their end game. They want to know as much about you as possible. Um, and ultimately, Facebook wants to be just ubiquitous on the internet. If you are doing something on the internet, they want you to be doing it on Facebook so they can continue to, to collect data about your behavior and your interests. So of course, Facebook wants to be a big part of Giving Tuesday. When there's a flurry of online activity and lots of payments being processed, that is a gold mine for them. And it also serves their interest as a corporation while being good PR for them. Um, certainly there's been a lot of money funneled into Facebook's uh, Giving Tuesday endeavors um, and stories about Facebook fostering huge nonprofit matches through their platform is good publicity for them. It builds goodwill. So. There's a lot of reasons why Facebook wants to be involved in Giving Tuesday. Not all of them are secrets, um, but hopefully this gives you a little bit of perspective about what Facebook's end game is here. So this brings us to our main point for this webinar, which is uh, the questions and concerns that people have about Giving Tuesday. It's almost a decade old and it's changed a lot from year to year. It's gotten bigger and people have questions and concerns about participating in Giving Tuesday. One of the most common sources of confusion is whether nonprofits have to use Facebook. Um, I actually hear this a lot leading up to Giving Tuesday from our customers and our users on Mighty Cause. Um, and the answer here is obviously no, you don't have to use Facebook. Um, Facebook is a big player in Giving Tuesday. We might even say the biggest, um, but they don't own the event. Um, organizations can do basically anything you want to raise money on Giving Tuesday. There are other options uh, aside from running your campaign on Facebook, you can run your own campaign using your website, uh, a donation page on your website. Um, you can participate in a local Giving Tuesday event, and you can also participate on Mighty Cause. We have our own organized Giving Tuesday event. Um, and that might be a great alternative for smaller nonprofits because that is our user base. Mighty Cause as a platform is built to serve small and mid-sized nonprofits. Um, so it's really geared toward that audience, our event is. We do have prize money, but you also get access to a full suite of fundraising tools that can serve you throughout the year. We have free training and resources and templates and a whole bunch of webinars planned that will help you fundraise better. Um, and you have ownership and control over your donor data, which is really important to note. Um, so if you're interested in uh, trying something new for Giving Tuesday and you've tried Facebook in the past, you don't have to. You might want to check out Mighty Causes event. Just stay tuned for some more information about that. Uh, we will be announcing our site and our registration soon, so just keep your eyes on your inbox for more news about our Giving Tuesday event. Um, a lot of people who don't spend hours poring over Giving Tuesday data, like I do, question are people still actually giving on Giving Tuesday? Or is it fading into obsolescence? Um, and overwhelmingly, people give on Giving Tuesday. We can see that in data from the Giving Tuesday organization that they gather. And we see it on our own prop platform at Mighty Cause. Um, Giving Tuesday has become and it remains one of the biggest days for fundraising all year long. So even if you've got another campaign running, even if you've got one coming up or just came off of a big campaign or you're focusing on end of year, you should really plan on doing something for Giving Tuesday, though the extent of it is up to you. Um, and even though Giving Tuesday did have a little bit of a downturn um, in 2019, it's picked up momentum again and it's definitely not becoming obsolete or irrelevant. People are still giving by droves on Giving Tuesday. 
And I just wanted to give you a little bit of data visualization to go along with this. This is from Giving Tuesday, the organization. Um, and it's um, a sort of a chart of giving through 2020. And as you can see, it's pretty steady, pretty steady. And then there's these two large spikes. One is in May and the other one is early in December. And those both coincided with Giving Tuesday events in 2020. So that is the effect of, of Giving Tuesday on charitable giving. It's absolutely no joke. You can see it in the data. Um, those big spikes are Giving Tuesday. So there's always some question about um, who owns Giving Tuesday from nonprofits. This is a source of confusion for a lot of small nonprofits who are trying to dip their feet into Giving Tuesday for the first time, or they just kind of don't know what to do. Um, which event is the original event, which is the one I'm supposed to participate in. And the truth is that Giving Tuesday is owned by you, by me, it's owned by all of us because it's a movement rather than a formalized event that is owned and operated by one company or organization. So every nonprofit can, can, can decide for themselves where they wanna participate in Giving Tuesday and how. Um, Facebook's Giving Tuesday events, local Giving Tuesday events on Giving Tuesday. We have giving events on Giving Tuesday, which is a little bit of a mouthful to say. Um, and we host a few of them on our platform platform on Mighty Cause. Um, we have our own separate Giving Tuesday event that's open to everybody. Um, campaigns are run by organizations themselves. They're all equally valid and legitimate because nobody actually owns the movement. It's just a question of where do you want to go as a nonprofit and what makes the most sense for your organization. And finally, the big question, especially for a lot of smaller nonprofits, is is it worth participating in Giving Tuesday? Um, as we've discussed, it's definitely still worth doing something on Giving Tuesday, though what that looks like for each nonprofit can vary, um, but it's absolutely worth still participating in Giving Tuesday. Um, and the other thing is that if your Giving Tuesday campaigns are starting to feel stale or repetitive to you, or if your donors seem to be less responsive to it, um, and even if your staff is like, hey, this is way too much of a grind and we're really tired of Giving Tuesday, um, it's worth looking into ways to invigorate Giving Tuesday by trying something new, like focusing on a different aspect of your organization, like volunteerism, uh, trying to engage donors in a different way, um, maybe even having an in-person volunteer-based event or changing up your storytelling, um, just something to make Giving Tuesday feel exciting and new again like it did in those first few years. So now I really want to shift forward into looking at the fall and how you can make Giving Tuesday work for your organization. First up, if you are finding that Facebook is not a good avenue for your nonprofit, if you've hustled hard every year to get those matching funds and you didn't pull it off, you didn't actually manage to get those matching funds and you're frustrated with Giving Tuesday on Facebook, you can totally divest from Facebook. Um, you could try Mighty Causes Giving Tuesday event if you still want to try to win some prize money. Um, you could plan a local event or join an existing local event, but there's a lot that you can do off Facebook that is worthwhile for your organization. And you can also think about broadening your scope as we were just talking about and find a focus for Giving Tuesday that helps your nonprofit move toward its long-term goals and what's most meaningful for your organization, whether that's recurring giving, retaining donors, kicking off your end of year campaign, or even doing some work to build your volunteer base. For a lot of organizations, the goal of Giving Tuesday is basically just as much money as possible. And that's absolutely a worthwhile goal for Giving Tuesday and fundraising. Um, but you can also think about incorporating some different goals for Giving Tuesday to give you a new uh, focus and purpose for the event. Um, for, for example, what are your internal goals as an organization? What are some things that you need to work on or focus on? Um, maybe you can work with your major gift donors and your existing sponsors and secure your own matching funds from them um, to get your donors excited about giving. Um, and you can strengthen your existing relationships or also, or also forge new uh, sponsorship relationships that will pay off well after Giving Tuesday is over rather than just joining in the rat race for Facebook funds. Um, you can also focus on engagement and in nurturing your existing donors, engaging your community online and in person. Um, and again, you can just think of the long game. What are your long-term goals and how can you leverage the giving moment of Giving Tuesday to achieve them? 
Um, on nonprofit, on Giving Tuesday, a lot of nonprofits focus on quantity of donations and getting as many as possible. But one thing that 2020 really made clear is that recurring giving um, they are, is vital to running a stable nonprofit. And one of the um, things that Giving Tuesday their report giving in unprecedented times predicted was that this would be key for nonprofits moving forward. So Giving Tuesday can be an opportunity to launch a giving to a give, recurring giving program, focus in on getting recurring donors, um, think about incentives and sponsorship opportunities that could help you gain more recurring donations and so on. Um, focusing on recurring giving helps you end the year strong, makes your organization more resilient, and it can get you thinking about Giving Tuesday as a launch pad for your fundraising success throughout the year and making it part of uh, your efforts to become a stable nonprofit that's bringing in consistent funding. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I wanted to end the presentation by just reiterating that Giving Tuesday can really be whatever you make it. So pulling back, <coughs> pardon me, and thinking about the broader picture of not only Giving Tuesday, but also your nonprofit can really make Giving Tuesday more than just a fight to the death for some matching funds through Facebook. And you can use it as a springboard for your year round success and goals. Um, Giving Tuesday has been around for nearly a decade, and that decade has seen a lot of changes in what Giving Tuesday is and how it operates. There's no actual rule book for how to best utilize Giving Tuesday, um, but you can use it well by turning it into a giving moment for your nonprofit that helps carry you well after Giving Tuesday is over. Um, <clears throat> and just as a last note, if you're interested in Mighty Causes Giving Tuesday event, it's always a good time. I help run that event. So please stay tuned for more details in your inbox. Um, we are going to be launching the site and our registration soon. And we have some good prizes that we're working on and lots of training efforts. So that should be a really good place, especially for small nonprofits that maybe haven't seen a return from participating on Facebook. All right, so I did want to take some time and go through any questions. So if you have any questions that you'd like to ask, any topics you'd like to um, ex have me expand on, um, any, any disagreements, any, anything along those lines, just go ahead and type those into the Q&A box um, and we will make time to get to those. Um, so I'll just give everybody a moment to type your questions. I really hope that y'all have questions for me. Um, so if there's any burning topics um, that you want to talk about related to Giving Tuesday, I you have my ear, you have my undivided attention. So go ahead and pop those into the Q&A box of your um, Zoom window. It looks like we've got a question. But I just have to. All right, actually, I think I have to stop sharing my screen in order to see it. Hang on just a second, I'm having some technical difficulties. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing. And now I can see the questions. Okay, sorry about that. Um, the first question is from Antoinette. Are we able to get a copy of this recording? My internet keeps going out. I'm so, so sorry to hear that your internet keeps going out of, out of, uh, in and out. Yes, I will distribute a recording um, of this webinar so you can go back and check out anything you may have missed or share it with anybody that you think would benefit from watching um, this recording. Um, so hopefully that answers your questions. As soon as I can uh, get it up onto YouTube, I will send it out to everybody in an email. Um, this is a question from Rachel. Um, what are the stipulations for matching funds? Uh, never really tried to go for it in the past because we were a smaller nonprofit. I'm curious. Um, so I guess we're talking about the uh, matching funds on Facebook. Um, it, basically, it's kind of a, a race against time. Uh, they match up to a certain amount. Um, that basically, the first donations that come in get matched in, I think, 2018 and 2019, they did cap matches um, and they 
put limits on the amount that one organization could get or one donor could have matched to sort of distribute it a little bit more evenly. Um, but it really is a race against time. It's not, um, you know, it's not a meritocracy. It's not on the strength of your fundraising. It's not really equitable. Um, it's really just who gets in there first and eats up those matches. That is what happens. Um, on giving on uh, giving to say on Mighty Cause, um, we do have prize money available, and those can be won in a variety of different ways. Um, usually, we have some leaderboard prizes, so that gives you a, a prize a cash prize for your cumulative fundraising total. So if you fundraise hard, um, you might get some prize money from Mighty Cause. We also tend to have hourly competitions. So there's usually a few of them throughout the day where you're either looking to bring in the, the most amount of money or the highest number of donors. And we typically split those into small and large nonprofits so that the competition is a little bit more fair. Um, so that is one of the benefits of participating on Mighty Cause is that you have a, a several different ways that you can can win prizes um, and win some prize money. And it's not just a race to be there first. And that's kind of why bigger nonprofits have had an easier time securing some of those matching funds from the Facebook competition, because they just have a whole team of people strategizing and ready to go. And they've coordinated some really big gifts um, during those first few seconds of Giving Tuesday, which is why they're eaten up so quickly. Um, so that's kind of how it works. Facebook is just kind of a free for all where you just need to get in there and get those donations and get those matching funds while they're still available. Um, but there's been a lot of disappointment at how quickly they've run out in the past. Um, so that's one of the benefits of participating on Mighty Cause is that there's lots of chances to win some funds for your nonprofit. Um, and let's see. Oh, this is a question from Mary. Um, I thought when I Googled Giving Tuesday and registered our organization, I was registering us as a nonprofit to be on the list of nonprofits eligible to receive donations. Am I correct? Yes. Um, so basically what happens on Mighty Cause, um, if you're talking about Mighty Cause, I think you're talking about Mighty Cause, there's a few different things. And this is where it gets confusing because there's so many things happening on Giving Tuesday and not all of them are connected. So for instance, if you went to Mighty Cause and you were new to our platform and you registered for our Giving Tuesday event, you would at that point be A, registered to participate in our Giving Tuesday event and become eligible for prizes, you would also be registering your nonprofit to use the Mighty Cause platform throughout the year. So you would have access to a year round fundraising page that you can use um, whenever you have a campaign. So you get both of those things when you're registering on Mighty Cause. Um, GivingTuesday.org, the website that is uh, run by the Giving Tuesday organization, um, when you register there, you are registering an event. Basically, you're registering as a, an organization or an event that is happening on Giving Tuesday because they don't run their own event. They just sort of capture all of the activity that's happening around the globe related to Giving Tuesday and that they have a map that you can submit your Giving Tuesday event to. Um, they also have some training materials and other things that are of interest if you want to participate in Giving Tuesday. But this is very confusing because there's so many events going on. You've got Facebook, you've got Mighty Cause, um, you've got uh, the Giving Tuesday folks themselves, you've got some local events, and some of those actually happen on Mighty Cause. On Giving Tuesday, we have multiple events happening that day in addition to our main Giving Tuesday event. Um, but what I'm talking about here for the most part is our specific Giving Tuesday event that you can register for to let us know that you'd like to participate and be eligible for prizes. And if you're a new nonprofit, um, you get access to your nonprofit fundraising page that you can use throughout the year and all of our fundraising tools. So I feel like that was a bit of a long answer, Mary. So uh, you can always connect with me offline at lynda at mightycause.com if you have any follow-up questions. Um, um, but that's kind of the gist of it is there's a lot of different ways that you can register, but on Mighty Cause we do have our own specific event. Um, and there's other things that you can register for as well, but just on Mighty Cause you register for our event to let us know that you want to participate and you get access to your page if you don't already have it. Okay, it looks like there's also some chats, so I just want to check those real quick. Um, OK, 
Okay, so great. This is a question from Malcolm. I'm glad I checked this. Um, Malcolm asks, how much success have you seen with nonprofits using Instagram as opposed to Facebook for their fundraisers? So the thing that to keep in mind here is that Facebook owns Instagram. So I think we haven't really seen a huge result with nonprofits using um, Instagram. If you like go into your Instagram stories and you have a little button that, you know, you click say, says donate, that is actually through Facebook, but you can use your, your own link if you put the link in your bio. I don't really have any data about how much has been done through Instagram. So that would be an interesting question in, in future um, Giving Tuesday retrospectives is how much activity happens on Instagram. They do make it a little bit tough on Instagram, unfortunately, because um, they have they don't have a way to directly link people, right? Um, and because of their content surfacing um, technology, sometimes your posts don't get seen in people's feeds until like a day or two later, sometimes even a week later. So Instagram is not the ideal place, but if you have a big following there, you can certainly utilize that and raise a lot of money on Instagram if you have people that follow you on Instagram. Um, but just Facebook as a, I mean, sorry, Instagram as a platform makes it a little bit difficult. Um, if you can, I would recommend getting like a link tree. Um, link tree is free to use and that allows you to sort of have a repository for any links you want people to be able to utilize. You can put that in your bio so that people can link to uh, your donation page or wherever you're collecting donations. Um, and you can also just play, paste the link in your bio and have people go there to make their donation. People on Instagram are used to that. So they know that you can't post a direct link. Um, if you have 10,000 followers or more, you can actually do a little swipe up link um, in your Instagram stories, which are the sort of 24 hour Snapchat like um, things that you see at the top of the Instagram app. Um, so you can always do a swipe up there, but I just don't have a lot of data about Instagram. So I would be really um, curious if anybody has used um, used Instagram to great effect on Giving Tuesday. I just haven't seen a whole lot of data. So that's definitely an interesting question. Um, let's see. All right, I think that's it for questions. Uh, like I said, we are all, we are going to distribute a recording of this webinar. Um, so you'll have the recording, you can show it, you can save it, and I'll also distribute the slides. Um, thank you all so much for joining me today and for all of your great questions. Um, I hope I'll see some of you for Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause um, and have a great day and happy fundraising. <laughs>